Okay, so here we are. Um, we've got what I can only describe as a big boy. Hello everyone and welcome to Sprocket. Today we're going to be building a very, very big boy. We're going to be building uh, like a land cruiser kind of vehicle. Uh, exceptionally long, exceptionally heavy, um, slow, cumbersome, and not that effective is pretty much what we're going to be going for. Uh, in terms of actually being a good vehicle, we have very few hopes of this being particularly great. We can put a decent gun on it, we can put decent turret traverse, and we can put as good armor as you can really get in this situation in the tank. But uh, ultimately, it's going to be a big target, so we're going to have to see <laughs> what ends up happening with this design. And... Uh, yeah, I'm going to give it my best shot to make this effective, and uh, I will see you after the quick, speedy bit. So, yeah, the uh, Land Cruiser. This was always going to be a heavily requested one, and you guys didn't disappoint. Uh, everybody really wants to see big boys, um, and I, I can't lie, uh, I, I got to agree somewhat. <laughs> They're, they're fun. It, this was a fun one to build, and uh, certainly an interesting design. It's uh, starting off kind of looking a bit British, in, in kind of like a Churchill, but bigger. But uh, eventually it kind of looks like a mix between maybe French and German, I'm not really sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, long, long boy this one. And uh, I wanted a taller turret than that really, but I, I couldn't get it. And I went with the old three turret arrangement, one one on the front, one on the back, and then the big middle one uh, with a big old gun, big old howitzer kind of gun. It ended up being more of an anti-tank gun than uh, you'd normally expect from a tank like this, but, uh, you know, it's, it's all in good fun. And uh, balancing out a gun of this era uh, is, is quite a challenge because, uh, well, really, not a lot of tanks used them. I'm actually quite happy with this one, how this one turned out as well. It uh, looks a lot better than I was expecting it to. I was expecting it to look a little bit silly just because it... Well, I mean, it's a silly design really, isn't it? But uh, in the end, I was quite satisfied with uh, how it looked, which is nice. It's always good to, uh, to feel good about your designs. But, uh, you know, let me know what you think of it. And um, let me know if you uh, have enjoyed this build. Uh... I was going to do something funky with the roof, make it look like the gun would, you know, depress and, and then the, the muzzle would go up there and I uh, just didn't hugely like how the regular cupola looked alongside that. So I kind of used one of these square pieces of fake cupola and then used a the real cupola on the front to make it look like a little viewer port for the driver. It doesn't quite fit the bill, but, uh, you know. It's fine. We'll uh, we'll we'll let it slide for the purposes of letting this tank have a commander, because I wanted every advantage we could. Couldn't find a place to put stowage on this either, which is why you can see me just randomly trying to force things everywhere. Did get an external fuel tank though on the back, just one. But uh, you know, it, it's it's little respite to the crew who's going to have to sit in this thing in a boiling hot desert. But you know, the, it's the thought that counts. Five crew as well in this bad boy, which I, I think I say later, so I don't really need to tell you that now. But um, yeah, and hatches everywhere for those crew to get out of the vehicle, because well, it, frankly, they're they're gonna need it. It's only only got about 40 millimeters of armor on the front when I'm done with it, so uh, definitely not a particularly heavy tank in terms of armor. Definitely a heavy tank, just not a heavy tank. Um, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And uh, definitely a step up from the previous heavy tanks I've built in terms of uh, ridiculousness. Fenders didn't want to work on this one either. So uh, obviously, saw me placing the custom ones earlier. Swapping faction right now because I keep forgetting to do it. And because I have literally no creative power left in my body, I called it the Behemoth. Because, uh, you know, that's definitely not cliche for a heavy tank at all. But yeah, this is pretty much the fi finished product now, so um, I will now return you to the normal commentary. Okay, so here we are. Um, we've got what I can only describe as a big boy, and uh, I, 
inexplicably, I really don't know why, uh, for some reason it lets me have up to 200 millimeters of armor on this thing, uh, which I thought is, you know, as, as, as effective as it would be to slap 200 millimeters of armor everywhere on the hull, and I could probably do it and then just give it a bigger engine, because we've got so much room on the internal of this thing. Uh, it doesn't seem, frankly, realistic at all, and I didn't really want that. So we've got an engine which is considered slow, um, but uh, still, you know, 16 litre V8, it's not a bad amount of power, as you can see, up to 600 at, at max RPMs there, but realistically, it's going to over rev above 2500, so about 378 horsepower. Uh, I've got some quite aggressive gear ratios to hopefully help it get up hills. Um, I'm not the best with that, so we might need to go back and tweak that. Um, reversing is going to be fast, but also struggles to get up hills. I've given it twin transmission just because I feel like with clutch transmission, it's going to just be impossible to uh, drive this thing around effectively at all. Uh, in terms of cannon, 76 millimeter, not really a howitzer. It is a bit of an anti-tank gun, uh, but only 59 millimeters of penetration, so not fantastic. It won't be a guaranteed penetration, but if it does go through, it'll do quite well. Um, five crew, I'd like to have put six, maybe even seven in this tank. Uh, we didn't have enough, sp and the game doesn't let you, frankly. That's... Uh, just a limitation of the game. I put a radio man in because we've got these two antennas on the turret to make it look just a little bit classic. Uh, I wanted to put armored plates over the tracks, but they just, they're not right. If they covered enough, they'd be uh, too far out. And if they covered too lit, uh, the right amount, they'd be like sticking through wheels and stuff. So I decided we'll just go uncovered tracks and uh, hope for the best. I've made it a rear sprocket just because, obviously, driving a transmission all the way to the front of this tank is a very fucking long job. Um, <laughs> and uh, especially it helps with uh, idle or wheels can't be shot to take out the track, as far as I'm aware. Only the sprocket can. So uh, hopefully we won't get tracked, which would kind of spoil the fun here. Now, we won't get many of these. This is a 29-ton tank, so uh, we're going to see how we do. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to succeed, frankly. I uh, We do have a good reload, and uh, the turret traverse is better than I expected. But, I mean, look at this traverse rate. This is shocking. <laughs> to be fair, it's to be expected of a tank that, that is longer than my house, so uh, I can't say I'm surprised by this revelation. Uh, it also it also seems to be struggling with gearing slightly. It's it's just jumping me straight up to gear five and then straight back down to gear one. But uh, we're getting a jiggy on. We're going a decent, nearly four miles an hour, which would be fast if we were in 1910. Which, granted, we're probably about 20 or 30 years after that now. But uh, let's just ignore that fact. I can't see over my turret, but okay, I don't need to. The Bennett's already dead. We are getting up the hills pretty well, actually. So there's clearly a lot of power behind this thing. Just um, power to weight is the issue. Uh, there's another thing there. Let's see if we can lob a shell over. It's not worked. Another tank coming over the hill over there. Looks like another Bennett. No problem going through that and killing it. Uh, that's one of the... French anti-tank things, uh, they can have quite a lot of frontal armor. Can we perhaps go through? I don't think we will. Let's get into the crevasse, because that is definitely going to be able to penetrate me. Um, ideally, we'd like to uh, track that thing so we can get around it, uh, or get a side shot somehow. Uh, these tanks here, behind the hill from me, I'm mostly worried about that anti-tank, frankly. I think my allies are going to be able to deal with Bennett's. Um, Oh, and there goes one of the anti-tanks, so that's that's promising. Uh, allies are doing very well here. I'm, I'm quite surprised uh, we haven't lost one yet, because the armor, it's substantial for a tank of this era, but it's definitely not impervious. Uh, oh, God, that's a trouble. Trouble to see. Not good. Not good at all. We're going to struggle to penetrate that anywhere. I'm going to shoot the uh, tracks. Hopefully it's got a front sprocket. Oh, it doesn't look like it does. 
I don't know of anywhere on that tank that we can shoot and go through. Uh, I, You know, of anywhere, you'd think the lower plate would be the weakest spot, but it doesn't seem to be. Yeah, no, that's not gone well. Uh, yeah, definitely a rear sprocket, but someone's taken out the track, possibly this guy. So let's carry on and uh, flank this guy because we're not going to go through the front in a million years. It's just too much armor on that thing. And uh, the gun on ours, while it's big, is definitely not effective uh, at uh, high penetration jobs. Perhaps we can go through this side angle? Yes, no problem. Very little side armor, those things, clearly, uh, compared to their, should we say, abundance of frontal armor. Probably about 70 millimeters or 80 millimeters on the front of those things. Now, uh, just got to get this thing uh, turned around. There we go. That's more like the traverse we're looking for. And uh, I imagine that tank in the distance is going to be our final target here. And then we can move on to do the ambush mission. And uh, hopefully achieve a 100% success rate. Because so far, I'm quite enjoying how this tank works. It would be nice if it was a little bit more likely to get killed. I feel it is maybe a bit overpowered just due to the amount of armor I've been able to put on it. But uh, perhaps 25 millimeters on the front would be a more realistic estimation. I mean, these things are big, but uh, boy, were they not armored. Um, like the T-35, I think, had maximum thickness of 15 or 20 millimeters. Uh, the Neuberfahrzeug, probably 25 millimeters at a guess. Uh, A1E1 independent, the British attempt. Uh, I can't think that the armor got any thicker than 40 millimeters anywhere. Um, there goes another Bennett, and I think that's an anti tank over there, which we may struggle with if he's not facing his side to us, which he might well be because I don't know how well the AI activates from that distance. Um, but yeah, perhaps just a bit ridiculous when it comes to the armor um perhaps we need to adjust these gear ratios a little bit gear five perhaps i was a bit too ambitious with the top speed but it keeps popping over to gear five when it really shouldn't be uh, i'd imagine there's going to be changes to the automatic transmission in this game at some point because it really isn't very good or at least add a uh, mode where we can suggest gears perhaps um so yeah, it's just a matter of hunting this guy down. We're never going to really outspeed it. It does look like it's facing me now. But um, downhill, we got a bit of go about us. Definitely need to change that fifth gear ratio. It's uh, not enough for uh, the top speed to really ever be uh, seen. And that is a very scary sight to see over the hill. Um... That's one of the very few tanks I fear in this uh, in this scenario. And if I ever get one in the ambush mission, I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> Probably die, I'd imagine. Is that even the front facing me? I really... I can't tell. I don't think it is. I think that's the rear of it facing me. Which is going to be good for us. Let's just crest the hill. I can't see a thing over this frontal turret. Oh no, that's definitely the front. No, it's not. It's the rear. It's the rear facing us. And he's giving us side now because he's noticed we're here. He's gone. But the mission is not over. <laughs> Where's the last guy? Is it this one? Oh, look, it looks like it's this one. Oh no, I don't have enough depression. Uh, he doesn't have a very good traverse rate though. Can we outdo his traverse rate? Oh, God, he won't die. It's a persistent Bennett. Okay, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> we managed it. Okay, I'm going to tweak the transmission, and I will see you in the ambush scenario. Okay, hopefully here we'll have a little bit more go in this tank, and we won't bog down quite as much. Right, first things first. God, jumping straight into the action here. Got to take out that Bennett to our side, because that's going to cause us problems. And I think I'm the only tank we've got, so it's going to be all V1 here. I've hit a tree. That's not going to do a lot against the Bennett there. Uh, I might even load the APHE if we're just fighting Bennets, because they do have fairly thin armor. And uh, against 60 mil of pen, I think 60 mil of pen is going to win. There goes another Bennett. Uh, there's one down there as well, so let's... 
prepare for him to come out from behind that rock, which he will eventually. And see if we can lob a shell over. It's bounced, but we did hit him. Try again. Okay, still not going through. There's another one over there. Uh, this one's firing at me now. That's bounced again. I may have to swap back to the AP here. Yeah, I am. Okay. Let's call it there with the a APHE. There we go. Through the side. Killed him. And uh, there's going to be one on the right here through the forest. There he is. I've hit a tree. That's not good. Uh, we want that. Oh, no. These trees hitboxes are not the best here. Uh, that's a good shot for us, though. Okay. Bennett's down. And I think... That'll be the lot of them on this first stage. We've just got the big boss to fight now. So, uh, <laughs> for your entertainment value, I will now speed up this extremely slow drive to uh, find the uh, final boss. Okay, so I've never seen this thing before, I don't think. It looks quite tall and uh, weirdly thin. I'm not sure what we're up against here. I have no idea how to take it on, thusly. Uh, I guess we'll just put some pot shots in and see what we've got. He's giving us inside the turret. Okay. Well, um, clearly, uh, the side of his turret, not very thick. Um, didn't put, put up much of a fight for a tank named... Uh, was that Behemoth? B4? And I'm also the, the Behemoth? I think I... I'm just going to say it... I I think I might take the biscuit with that uh, with that whole uh, behemoth title. I think I might be bigger. Just got a creeping feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I I think you're gonna have to lose that title, mate. I think you're gonna have to lose that one. <laughs> right. Well, that was very quick. So what I'm gonna do now, actually, is I'm gonna see how this thing stacks up against some of my own tanks. I uh, don't know how this is going to go, but let's uh, give it a try. Something different. Okay, so here we are in the sandbox, and uh, you can press Z and spawn in some of your own tanks over there. That's where they're going to spawn. And in order to make this a little bit more of an entertaining battle where it's not just shooting at the front of each other, we're going to have a 1v1, this tank versus a tank that I think is roughly equivalent. Um, so we're going to go with the, with the little German tank from last video and see how that fares. And I'm going to start myself just over this hill here and uh, see who can win in a quick little duel scenario. And uh, then perhaps, perhaps if this works, this could become a staple of the videos in the future. So... Uh, do let me know if you enjoy this bit in the comments below. Uh, and without much further ado, we will spawn in the Mark 19. Let's go with the beginner one and uh, see how we do. So that thing does have a fair whack of penetration. Probably able to get through the front of this because it does have that 40 mil with... I think it was about 70 mil of pen, so about the same as me. And I do have only 40 mil of armor. Could, ooh, could have taken a pot shot there, but I was not confident in my aim through the trees. I see I've shot high there, and uh, he's also missed every shot so far. That's bounced, actually. I'm quite surprised that bounced. I, uh, I thought it would go right through, but oh! Okay, yeah. See, he's gone through the, yeah, the machine gun port there, right through to the turret ammunition, and that is a, uh, a critical failure on the behemoth's parts, but um, best of three rules. So uh, I'll just get back into position, and we'll give it another go. Okay, so clearly, in an all-out battle of brawn, the Mark 19 has enough armor to bounce us and enough gun to penetrate us. So we're going to need some kind of advantage, whether it be the first shot or a side shot. And how we're going to get that, I'm not entirely sure. I do reckon... That the Mark 19 has the upper hand here. I don't even know where he's gone at the moment. There he is over there. Let's see if we can get to his side by sneaking around this way. Because I don't know if the AI is going to know where I am. I don't think they listen. I think they see. So if we can sneak around the side before engaging, we might be able to use our, our our advantages of uh being a human 
on our side here. So let's give it a go. And uh, hopefully we don't fluff the shot because we're only really going to get one um, in a realistic sense. We're going to get the shot soon. Any moment now. We're going to see that turret. There it is. Oh, didn't even get one. There we go. Straight through. Straight through the top of the tank. Uh, yeah. Frankly, I don't think this tank has it in it. Um, perhaps against the AI driving Bennett's, but uh, clearly against the Mark 19 with its uh, turret that doesn't quite fit in the realms of the game. We've got just too much armor on the front here. 60 mil. And obviously at slight range, at slight angle, that's going to be tough to penetrate. And then the mantlet's an extra about 20 millimeters of armor. You want to aim about here, really, if you you want to go through. But, um, yeah, no, this uh, this little 40 mil. Oh, it's a 47. 100 mil a pen, yeah. That's going to that's gonna ruin your day, really. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I swear that was a 40 mil. Maybe I uh, saved over the original version by accident. But, uh, oh, yeah, I must have. This has also got the 47, and this is the later version. Okay, right. Well... Oh well, uh, might have been fairer had I uh, actually saved the 40 mil version, but you know, there we go. Uh, the Behemoth has failed <laughs> to defeat the previous video's tank, but uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. Please have a like, favorite, and or subscribe if you enjoyed it, and uh, suggest more vehicles for me to try building, and I will see you in the future. Goodbye. Yeah!